Hello everybody. So we're going to look at Core 2 OCR June 2012 paper. The question that we're going to look at is question 6. Now if we read the question, it's about an experiment. And Sarah's doing the experiment and what she's doing is using a chemical. All we care about in maths really is the numbers, the amounts. So first she uses 6 grams of the chemical and then she uses 7.8 grams of the chemical. And she carries on doing some experiments, but they're the only two values of how much chemicals she used that we know. Okay. Now, if we read the first part of the question, it says, given the amount of chemical used, form an arithmetic progression. Keyword, find the total amount of chemicals used in the first 30 experiments. So we don't know for sure, but we're told that it could be that it's an arithmetic progression, which means you start with a value, and for the next value, you add on a common difference, which we call D. So the first term is A, the next term is A plus D. That means that we can find the common difference D by doing 7.8 minus 6, and 1.8 would be the value that we're adding on each time. Now, the question says we're doing 30 experiments. So if we carried on this pattern up to 30 experiments, we want to know what all these values are added together. Fortunately, you do not have to sit there in the exam on a calculator typing in all these values because you have a green formula booklet with a formula in that will do it for you. So if you find in your formula book where it says arithmetic series, the formula we're interested in is SN. That means the sum of the first N terms. And the formula is a half times N curly brackets. So that's just another way to write uh, big brackets. 2A plus N minus 1D. Okay. So the values that we need for our formula are N. A and D. We've just talked about what D is, it's a common difference. A represents the first term, which is 6, and N, how many terms we have, which is 30. So we substitute these values into our formula and put it into your calculator, and you can do that now, and you should get. That is 7.8, if you can't read it, 963. So if we look in the context of a question, how many grams is used? The total, 963 grams for three marks. The second part of the question is talking about how much chemicals we've used. If actually it wasn't an arithmetic progression, it was actually a geometric progression which means that each time we are multiplying by a number. So let's have a look at that. 6, 7.8. Now because it's the first two terms, we can't be exactly sure unless we're told what type of series it is. If it was geometric, timesing by R, the first term is still 6. R we are going to get by doing 7.8 divided by 6, which is 1.3, and n we're not sure about, because if you read the question, it says, how many experiments are we going to do if we've got only 1,800 grams of chemical to use? Okay, so we're going to use a formula to add up all the terms, but the difference is, we are not going to know what the value is of how many terms we're adding up. That would be our unknown. So if we look at the formula for geometric series, Sn is A, 1 minus R to the N over 1 minus R. In our case, we do not know what N is. So we're going to call it big N because that's been suggested in our question and we can substitute the other values into our formula. 6, 1 minus 1.3 to the big N, which is our unknown, over 1 minus 
uh, 1.3. So, if we think about this value, it's got to be less than or equal to 1,800 grams. Okay, because that's the only chemicals we've got, 1,800 grams worth. Now we have to use this information, this green formula, and get to this answer. That's what a show that means. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to think, well, 1 minus 1.3 is minus 0.3, and we are going to do some algebra to simplify this inequality. Okay. So, first thing that we're going to want to do is times up by minus 0.3. Hopefully, you've been taught that if you want to times up by a negative in inequality, you have to change the sign around. Okay? So, we get 6, 1 minus 1.3 to the n is greater than, because we've swapped the sign around, uh, 1,800 times by minus 0.3 minus 540. Now we divide by 6 and that's fine because it's just a positive number and we get minus 90. Now we can take away 1 and we get minus 1.3 to the n is greater than or equal to minus 91. Now we think that's not a very nice inequality because we've got negatives on both sides. So you want to times both sides by minus 1. And that means that we're going to have to flip the inequality sign again to get 1.3 to the n is less than or equal to 91, which is what we were aiming for. Now the second part of the question asks us to use logs to calculate, calculate the actual value of them. So logs are great for bringing the power down, and you could do this very simply by using log to base 1.3 on your calculator, but I'm going to show you the way with normal logs. So with normal logs, it doesn't matter what the base is, we take logs of both sides of the inequality, and this helps us to bring down n from the power to the front of the logarithm, and now we can divide by, um, I won't write that yet, you'll see why in a minute. We can divide by log of 1.3. Now remember what we were talking about, timesing and dividing by negatives. Log of 1.3 represents a number. So I want you to put it into your calculator, log 1.3, and check if that value is positive or negative. I've just checked it myself, and it is positive, so we are okay to do the division without swapping the sign around. But it's very important to check that. If you do that on your calculator, log of 91 divided by log of 1.3, you get 17.193, etc. Now think about the context of a question. It's asking how many experiments can we do. You can't do 17.193 experiments in real life. So that means that actually it didn't spell out explicitly, but n has to be an integer. So that means that n is the most you can do, which is 17. If you get up to 18, you've run out. Okay. I hope this video is useful and it helps in your core two work. Good luck.